Amazon's $11 billion AI data center in Indiana, one of the largest in the world, is now live. A year and a half ago, if you drove through New Carlisle, Indiana, you'd see exactly what you'd expect from rural America. Endless cornfields, a quiet main street, and about 1,900 people living their lives far from the chaos of Silicon Valley. Today, that same stretch of land hosts what might be the most ambitious AI infrastructure project on the planet. Seven fully operational data center buildings filled with over half a million AI chips, consuming more electricity than the entire city of San Francisco and burning through water reserves that have local officials conducting emergency aquifer studies. Amazon didn't just build a data center here. They executed a hostile takeover of a small town's entire infrastructure, received $8 billion in tax breaks for the privilege, and are now racing to replicate this blueprint across America. But here's the part that should terrify anyone paying attention. Nobody knows if this massive bet will actually pay off. Some of the world's smartest analysts think we're watching the biggest infrastructure overbuild in modern history, a speculative frenzy that will leave abandoned data centers dotting the landscape when the AI bubble inevitably pops. Others insist demand for AI compute is so ferocious that even this unprecedented build-out can barely keep pace. What's undeniable is this. Amazon just proved they can transform farmland into operational AI supercomputers faster than anyone thought physically possible. And they're using a playbook that trades local resources and tax revenue for jobs that may never materialize. This is the story of how corporate speed collided with small-town America and why what happened in Indiana will either define the AI era or serve as its most embarrassing cautionary tale. The deal that changed everything. Let's start with how this even happened because the timeline defies normal construction reality. Late 2022, ChatGPT drops and suddenly every tech giant realizes they're catastrophically behind on AI infrastructure. Amazon starts frantically shopping for locations that can support massive power demands. They contact American Electric Power, whose subsidiary Indiana Michigan Power sees an opportunity. We introduced the concept of an Indiana data center to Amazon and they basically said, what do you have? Utility representative Ashley Savio recalled, they pointed Amazon toward New Carlisle, not because it was ideal, but because it had extra high voltage transmission lines and a substantial substation already built. Infrastructure that would take years to construct elsewhere already existed. By spring 2023, Amazon was visiting the site. One year later, the $11 billion deal became official. Indiana's largest capital investment ever. September 2024, Amazon broke ground. October 2025, seven buildings achieved full operation. Let that timeline sink in. Normal data centers of this scale take three to five years minimum. Amazon did it in 12 months. How? They hired four general contractors simultaneously, changed building designs mid-construction to add newer cooling technologies, and essentially operated under a state of permanent emergency mobilization, the hidden cost. Now here's where the story gets uncomfortable. To make this happen, Indiana and the county gave Amazon over $8 billion in tax breaks. Read that again. $8 billion to one of the world's wealthiest corporations. The county granted over $4 billion in property and technology tax exemptions over 35 years. State legislation from 2019 saves Amazon roughly $4 billion more over 50 years. In exchange, Indiana officials claim they'll see GDP improvement exceeding $1 billion and nearly 9,000 jobs were created. But that job number is deliberately misleading. Those are temporary construction positions. Amazon promises 1,000 long-term jobs with at least 600 paid above county average wage. For perspective, that's giving away $8 billion to create 1,000 permanent jobs in a town of 1,900 people. The math doesn't just fail to add up, it's insulting. Local resident Dan Caruso watched this unfold with growing horror and had 100 protest signs printed. 
We've got water issues. They're uncertain whether the power grid can supply Amazon, GM, and the town. There may be brownouts occasionally. He's not wrong to worry. General Motors and Samsung are simultaneously building a $3.5 billion EV battery plant nearby. Suddenly, this tiny town is expected to support two of the most resource-intensive industrial operations in modern manufacturing. Infrastructure collapse. The strain is already showing. 4,000 construction workers descend on the site daily. For a town with one main highway running through it, that's apocalyptic. It's gotten very dangerous on Highway 20 and Highway 2, Caruso explained. The county has responded with more patrols. Our police department for our town has been taxed because they do respond. Safety is the biggest concern. Amazon is paying $7 million for highway improvements. County officials say they're negotiating up to $15 million more for road improvements. Amazon's also contributing $114 million for water treatment plant and sewer line upgrades. Sounds generous, until you realize the completed facility will consume 2.2 gigawatts of electricity, enough to power 1.5 million homes and millions of gallons of water annually. One report found that monthly electricity bills in areas near new data centers are up to 267% higher than than five years ago. The utility serving this area, INM, anticipates peak power demand more than doubling from approximately 2.8 gigawatts in 2024 to over 7 gigawatts by 2030. That demand is driving market-wide price increases for everyone. Meanwhile, New Carlisle must supply water to both Amazon and the future GM facility. Council President Marcy Kaufman admitted her town is conducting emergency studies of local aquifers to figure out if they can even handle this demand. Amazon is also planning to build on 10 acres of natural wetland in the middle of the project, though they claim they're revising designs to minimize impact. The anti-NVIDIA bet What's actually being built inside these facilities is almost as remarkable as the speed of construction. Workers are assembling towers containing 64 AI chips each, Amazon's own custom Tranium 2 chips. There isn't a single NVIDIA GPU in these buildings. This represents a massive strategic bet that Amazon can design chips competitive enough to challenge NVIDIA's near total dominance of AI hardware. Amazon's been working toward this since 2013, starting with specialized nitro chips, acquiring Israeli startup Annapurna Labs in 2015, and launching their ARM-based Graviton server chips by 2018. Their first AI chip, Inferentia, arrived in 2019. Tranium 1 launched in 2021. Tranium 2 came out last December. The economics are compelling. Amazon CEO Andy Jassy claims Tranium 2 offers 30 to 40 percent better price performance than rival GPU instances. Availability is another major factor. Nvidia has massive backlog problems while Amazon controls its own supply chain. The strategy is fitting twice as many simpler chips per building to match or exceed GPU compute power while keeping electricity and cooling requirements manageable. Critics have hammered Tranium 1 and Inferentia 2 for being non-competitive in Gen AI training due to weak hardware specs and poor software integration. AWS VP Prasad Kalyanaraman admitted Tranium 1 was essentially a learning exercise. Tranium 2 is where we're at now, and Tranium 3 is where we're quite excited about our cost-competitive nature. Tranium 3, developed directly with Anthropic, is expected later this year with better performance, latency, and power consumption per flop. The Anthropic Dependency Here's the truly wild part. This entire $11 billion facility is devoted to running AI workloads for essentially one customer. Anthropic, OpenAI's primary rival. Amazon's already running about 500,000 chips in Indiana, and because it's going so well, they've doubled down, expecting to run more than a million Tranium 2 chips by year's end. Founded in 2021 by former OpenAI researchers, Anthropic has positioned itself as the safety-focused alternative in the AI wars. Despite recently signing a major deal with Google for TPU access, Anthropic has used AWS as its primary cloud provider since Amazon's first big investment in 2023. Amazon has poured roughly $8 billion into Anthropic across multiple investment rounds. As one analyst bluntly put it, if you think about Anthropic, it really doesn't exist without Amazon. The multiple multi-billion dollar investments are the reason Anthropic is a player today. The two companies worked intimately on the Indiana site and chip designs. They've given us good insights into what we need to accelerate in the chip, Kalyan Araman explained. This creates a fascinating dependency. Amazon needs Anthropic to succeed to justify this massive chip investment. Anthropic needs Amazon's infrastructure to train models competitive with OpenAI and Google. If either fails, both could collapse. The power nightmare? The 2.2 gigawatt completed site will consume as much electricity as 1.5 million average homes in the service area. The utility also committed to powering a new $2 billion Google data center in Fort Wayne. 
The two data centers we will serve will be almost as much as our entire electric load presently, utility representatives admitted. Currently, 53% of INM's power comes from a nearby nuclear plant, stable but limited capacity. Another 35% comes from a coal plant scheduled for closure in 2028. Though the Trump administration announced in September that most coal plants will delay retirement to deliver AI-required power, INM is also acquiring a natural gas plant in Oregon, Ohio that would provide 15% of power by late 2026. How does burning natural gas and extending coal plant life align with Amazon's pledge to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2040? The path from here to 2040 is not going to be linear, AWS leaders admitted. Are there going to be needs for gas-based generation? I think there absolutely will be. Amazon claims it's also investigating small nuclear reactors and has over five wind and solar projects in Indiana representing 635 megawatts of capacity. But the math doesn't work. They're contributing 635 megawatts while consuming 2,200 megawatts, and that's just phase one. The bubble question. This site is launching amid an unprecedented AI infrastructure spending spree. OpenAI and others have announced over a trillion dollars in data center deals in 2025 alone. Many analysts are terrified this represents catastrophic overbuilding. I think they're still building on a proposition that we may not end up seeing realized, one skeptical analyst explained. It's just crazy how much building is going on. AWS leaders insist they're different. Not for us in particular, others may have speculative investments or deals. I am not cashing any of the checks OpenAI is writing right now. They are talking about a lot of capability. We don't know how the power is going to work, and a lot of what they're announcing is fairly speculative. The counter-argument is that AWS is uniquely positioned to execute. These deals all sound great on paper, but they only materialize when they're actually racked, loaded, and usable by the customer, and Amazon is incredible at that. The truth probably lies somewhere between. The money will keep Keep coming until it doesn't, one analyst predicted. It will probably take some form of economic downturn or complete cessation of AI progress to make this stop. I don't see that anytime in the near horizon. The expansion plan? New Carlisle is just the beginning. Two more campuses are under construction now for a total of 30 buildings on 1,200 acres. Completing them all will take at least two more years. Amazon's also planning Project Rainier facilities in Mississippi and beyond. These buildings are there for 30 or so years, and there's tons of innovation during that process, Kalyan Araman explained. It's a constantly evolving set of improvements we do all the time. For new Carlisle residents, the future feels like something imposed rather than chosen. I was for some of the growth, one resident recalled. My friends tried to tell me, you can't let them come in because once they get their toe in there, they'll want more. And that's exactly what happened. Another put it more bluntly, it's just difficult to keep losing farmland. This took a lot of farmland. As one industry observer noted, it's going to be a constant fight for data center builders to build in these communities because for the amount of land and resources they use, they don't provide a ton of jobs. When asked if AWS would ever be done building, one leader gave a chilling answer, I don't know that we'll be done ever. We're going to continue to build as our customers need more capacity. What happened in Indiana is either the future or a warning. Time will tell which.